start with um, Councillor Jim Gasser and Ch Councillor Jim Copley, just giving a bit of background and introduction to the Citizens Assembly. Then we've got Jenny from Shared Future um, talking a bit more about the process. And then we've got members of the Citizens Assembly giving their own sort of personal perspectives on uh, the Assembly and the recommendations. Then I'm going to talk a bit more about the recommendations and what the Council are going to be doing next. And then we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. So um, I'll hand over to Councillor Judy Gasser and Councillor Jamie Colkey. Uh, to start us off. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> Thank you and uh, good evening everybody and welcome and I'm really pleased to be introducing this um, report back from the citizens this evening. It's been just such a wonderful process. You know, I've thought about this, planned this when we we're in opposition. Let's hear from the people of Wandsworth because th they make so much sense. You all do. And I'm delighted that they've come up with a, a whole set of recommendations that they're going to share with you. And it's now down to us to do whatever we can to fulfil those recommendations. And Jamie, hopefully next to me, is our air quality champion. So he'll just explain, it, explain his role. Thank you, Judy. Um, yeah, uh, this has been this is really exciting today. Um, this uh, We've been sort of building up to this moment for the past year or so. Um, and finally, um, uh, we have these set of recommendations, which I'm really excited um, to get. Um, yeah, um, my role as air quality champion has been to sort of work with Councillor Gasser, work with the, both the officers of the council and the politicians, and to make sure um, that we deliver on air quality. And uh, so that's why I've been waiting um, ever since I've been given the role for the Citizens Assembly, because now we've got a fantastic set of recommendations, um, which I'm going to now treat as my Bible. I'm going to be using that to, um, always using this and asking, are we doing enough to be able to fulfil everything in the Citizens Assembly? And it's just really exciting to be here today. So I'm now going to pass on to Jenny to talk about it a bit more. Thank you, Jamie. Um, so I'm Jenny Willis from Shared Future. So Shared Future is a not for profit community interest company um, and we specialize in supporting citizens to have their voices heard in policy making um, and one of the ways that we do this is by running citizens juries and citizens assemblies so um, moving on to the next slide i'm just going to tell you you might some a lot of you might well know but just the, the sort of um nuts and bolts of what a citizens assembly is so you might have heard of citizens juries as well basically the same sort of process but a citizens assembly involves more a, a greater number of people so it's essentially a group of citizens who are um selected to broadly reflect the uh, relevant population so in this case the the borough of wandsworth the group comes together for at least 30 hours um, to learn more about the topic, to be able to deliberate on it, to receive information from outside commentators, as well as using their uh, their own experience, um, to be able to make recommendation in relation to whatever the particular issue or set of issues is. So the output at the end of a, a citizens assembly will be a, a set of recommendations. Um, the citizens assembly is independently organized and, and facilitated to ensure that it's 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 not a way that that councils or other commissioning bodies can just kind of you know get get their own ideas rubber stamped um that's that's not how it works and, and that's why there's that independent organization and facilitation and i'll come on to talk about the um uh, oversight panel in a little bit as well which which is also part of um, ensuring that sort of transparency and, and balance so a key thing for a citizens assembly is to is the is the focus question. So the next slide um, has the question on there, and this is what the assembly was tackled with coming up with recommendations to address. So the question was, how can we all tackle poor air quality across Wandsworth in a way that improves our health and addresses climate change? So that was front of our minds in, in every session. This was the question identified by the council as being the key one that they wanted citizens input on to address. So having um, having decided on that question, the, um, the next slide give some uh, information about um, the oversight panel which was then created. So as I said the oversight panel is there to ensure that the project design is fair, to monitor the selection process, um, to come up with ideas about who the assembly should hear from on the relevant topics and also importantly to be part of implementing the recommendations or supporting the implementation of the recommendations. 
So the oversight panel did include council officers and councillors, but also really importantly um, included representatives of local groups, so um, citizens, organisations and campaign groups. Also had people from academia um, and um, uh, public sector and political representatives, as, as it says there. So, so there, was, there was a broad church in, represented amongst the oversight panel who were looking over everything that we as Shared Future were doing as we were um, delivering the process alongside the, the citizens. So we go on to recruitment. Um, basically, we work together with an organisation called the Sortition Foundation, um, and they sent out an invitation letter to 10,000 households which were selected at random from the Royal Mail database. Uh, and the idea being that enough people would reply to that initial invite in order to select 50 people that would reflect the um, community in Wandsworth based on the characteristics which you can see listed there. So that was, uh, we were looking at gender, age, ethnicity, disability, indices of multiple deprivation, which is something that is based on postcode. And it, it's, it's a way of making sure that we have people from more affluent and less affluent areas of the borough and everywhere in between. We also looked at housing tenure to make sure that we had the correct proportions of people who either owned their own home or were in private rented accommodation or social rented um, housing. And we also asked questions about people's principal, um, that the sort of most common way that they travelled around the borough. So all of the, I think the number of people who responded to those 10,000 letters was around about 550, which gave Sortition, um, the Sortition Foundation, a good amount of people to make sure that they could then select, based on the characteristics that I've talked to you about, a group of 50 people that broadly reflected um, the community in the borough of Wandsworth. So having got our um, 50 chosen people, um, we then worked together over four full Saturdays. Um, so the first three sessions were quite close together. I think they were um, two, week, two weeks apart each. We then had a break before the final session, which I'll come on to. So the first session was a real kind of introduction to the problem. So we heard about what air pollution is, where it, what are the causes of it, what are the, what's the main situation in Wandsworth in terms of how it how it plays out in Wandsworth, what some of the stats were around that. Um, and obviously there was that element of assembly members starting to get to know each other and developing ways of working together and so on. And after that, towards the end of that first session, assembly members identified the key themes which they wanted to concentrate on in the future um, sessions. So as Shared Future, we were able to go back to the oversight panel and talk to them about who, based on the priorities that the assembly members had started to identify at the end of session one, who was relevant to come to session two. And I'll give you a list of all the people who came and presented um, in a following slide. But so the second session was very much focusing on those sort of key topics. Then in the third session, there was a bit more input from external um, commentators but there was also a lot of time spent by the assembly members together in themed groups, um, working on and developing the ideas that would form the basis of recommendations. Um, the gap we had then was five or maybe six weeks where we used an online platform to enable people who are part of the wider community, but not members of the Citizens Assembly, um, to be able to feed in their thoughts on the initial ideas and also add their own thoughts. And assembly members were also welcome to contribute as part of that online thing. And I'll come on to that in a minute. So then in the final session, the assembly members had the benefit of not only the ideas that they'd already come up with, but also some kind of sense checking and a, a bit of an idea about how some of those ideas were landing with the, with the wider community through the feedback that they got from the online engagement. And during the um it was quite an intense session that last one well they, they all were really because there was such a lot to discuss and get through but that final session there was you know prioritizing things merging ideas editing and you know trying to finalize those those recommendations um after that session once all the recommendations were finalized the assembly members also got a chance to fill in um a sort of voting booklet where they were able to put their own levels of priority on whichever recommendations they felt should um, be you know highlighted and also to give their 
reasons for why they felt certain recommendations were either really important or possibly less important. And all of that information and all of that detail is available in the public report, which is on the ones with council website. So there's a sort of shorter version of the report, but then there's various appendices and some of them are really interesting because it does include all that all that detail. Um, that report was delivered um, two weeks ago to the Environment Committee of the, the Council. Um, and at the end of this session, Andrew um, Hagger from Wandsworth Council is going to give you an update of what, what's happening with the recommendations at the moment. So that's broadly the, the process that we ran through. Um, so on the next slide, um, probably can't take all this in now and I'm not going to read it out but there's a list there of all the um, people that came along and presented to the assembly um, and e every single um, presentation that was made was recorded and it's all available on the ones with council website and I've put a link there because I'm sure these slides will be circulated or if anyone needs the link we can we can let you have that so the idea of making those um, publicly available was two things. One thing, it's actually really useful for assembly members as you go through the process, because sometimes by the time it comes to session four, you've forgotten something that someone said in session one. And the fact that you can go back and listen again to, to the commentators is a useful thing. But also really importantly for transparency, so that if people are outside of the process and see the recommendations and think, oh, why on earth did they come up with those things? Um, they've got a chance to see the input that that was given to the assembly from external commentators. Um, although I would say that um, there was a, a, a massive amount of experience that people brought with them as well, just from their daily lives of living and working in Wandsworth and from various different things. So obviously it's not just what the commentators um, contributed that is reflected in the in the recommendations it, it's it's a kind of digested version of what the commentators said and and then added to by the deliberation in the sessions and people's own you know um enhanced by people's own experiences and so on but yeah that's that list and if you want to see any of those presentations you, you can do that so um finally from for my part just to say a little bit about the wider online consultation um so we used an open source software called Polis, which is an engagement platform um, that is quite useful in that it identifies areas of consensus. So the way that this worked is there was roughly 50 or 60 statements that the assembly came up with by the end of the third session. And each of those, uh, you can see an example on the bottom right of this slide, you can see an example of a, what might be a statement. Um, each of those statements was put into Polis um, and then anyone who went onto the site has a chance to agree, disagree or pass on the statement um, that they can see in front of them. Um, one of the things which we find useful about Polis is it, it's not unlike other social media type platforms, um, it doesn't give people an opportunity to directly comment on a statement. So it's not about, oh, uh, you can't go down a rabbit hole according to a, a certain statement. It's it's quite quick fire. Do you agree, disagree, or are you unsure about something? Um, so those 50 statements were put on there. And then people who were taking part in the survey um, also had the opportunity to add their own statement. So if they didn't feel like something had already been um considered by the assembly they could add their own um they could add add their own idea for for, for people to for people to look at um and hopefully some people on this call maybe to you know participated in that um but the the really interesting thing about polis is that it um it identifies different opinion groups so based on uh, sort of patterns of how people respond and what they agree and disagree with and so on it identifies clusters of people and it identifies the things that make that it, it identifies the things that that group of people particularly agree or maybe particularly disagree on but also importantly as well as coming up with clusters of people that think differently it identifies areas of consensus so either way you've either way even when you've got a group where group a 
you know, feels very much like this and Group B feels very much like that. And that will be brought out. It also says, despite those differences, these are statements that both of those groups agree on. All these might be statements that both of those groups disagree on. And that was that was useful for assembly members in the final session when they were kind of reflecting on the ideas that they'd come up with. They had an idea of how they'd sort of landed with the um, with the with the wider community. So I'll stop there. But happy to take any questions at, at the end about any of that. But I'm going to stop there um, and I'm going to hand over to the assembly members to talk to you about why they got involved and what their experience was and what their reflections are. And I think uh, Ellis is going to kick us off with that. Thank you. I am. Um, yes. Hi. Uh, so I'm Ellis. I live in Ellsfield. Uh, so obviously part of Wandsworth. Um, I probably haven't got enough time to say why I got involved, what I learned, and why the recommendations are so important. Um, but almost just to set the scene. So four years ago, uh, in my job that I was doing, I was driving around London uh, all day, every day. Uh, and it wasn't until I left that role uh, and I no longer had a car. It was the first time I didn't have a, a vehicle since I was like 17. I sort of realized what it was like to be the person outside the vehicle, um, whether that is seeing what road rage looks like or how big vehicles are getting or the thing that stuck out to me most was when you were walking along the street and you could almost taste the, the like the metallic taste in the air um it just really stood out to me as something that probably needed to change so fast forward to now um someone who has a keen interest in like urban design sustainable and active transport um and like creating livable spaces when i got the leaflet through the door um, saying that this citizens assembly was happening it was an opportunity for me to sort of stop banging onto my mates and my colleagues uh, about all of this stuff and get involved in a bit of like real democracy um, and see a what I could learn um, and what could help so I think the recommendations that we came up with although I probably approached this initially from like a traffic and a vehicle perspective um, we learned so much around actually it's like commercial cooking and it's like building and its industry uh like it is still things like transit um but it's not just that and so i think the recommendations are really important because they take into account everyone's experience um they don't just focus on one solution they focus on a range of solutions um and they were brought together by a whole group of different people we had like retired physicians we had police officers we have people that work in industry and work in sustainability um, we had others that didn't work and were there to maybe like scrutinize the process because they didn't necessarily think that it was going to be um, really democratic. And I think just coming out of the experience, um, it gives me like the, just great confidence that A, Wandsworth are, are trying to do something um, about air quality and B, like they're trying to do it in the right way, um, which I think is super important. So I am passing over now to Molly, uh, who's going to share her perspective as well. Hi everyone, um, I'm just going to talk to you really quickly about why I joined the assembly um, and kind of what I took from it. So I live in the Battersea Park area and um, I first heard about the citizens assembly when a letter came through my door. Um, I didn't really have any knowledge or a lot of interest to be honest in the topic but I only moved into the borough about a year ago now and I thought it might be a really nice way to get involved with my local community um but I did definitely go into the sessions thinking this probably wasn't an area of you know big enough concerns that really warrant any kind of council intervention um so we spent the first couple of sessions learning about air pollution and its impacts and honestly it really kind of blew my mind how vast the topic is um and also how important it is from a public health perspective um I really realized that I along with I, I think a lot of people don't really know a lot about the topic. Um, for example, I was I was absolutely shocked when we learned about the impacts of, of air pollution within your own home, um, you know, when cooking and things like that, something that I'd, I'd never considered and I, I would never have known anything about if I hadn't gone along to the sessions. Um, I really feel like learning about air pollution and having the opportunity to listen to a whole range of different people with, with really differing perspectives has had a real impact on the way that I live my life. So I, I do have a car um, and I'm a lot more conscious now about, about driving only when I really need to. 
Um, and ultimately, it's really changed my perspective on the need for measures to reduce air pollution within the borough. I think it's a super important topic um, that we should definitely all be kind of doing something about and, and utilising these kind of forums where we can get everyone in the borough's opinions to inform those decisions. Um, and that's me. I'm not sure who I'm handing over to. I think it's, it's James. Thanks, Sorry. Molly. Thank you. Oh, it, it is me. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much for taking your time out today. Um, my name is James. Um, I live in South si uh, South Fields, um, that part of Wandsworth. Um, and I can say from the beginning, really, like everyone else, I received a letter in the post. Um, I was curious just in general about air pollution, as in I know it's everyone knows it's an issue. However, I didn't really understand the level or gravity of how it affects people um, on a well individual basis as well as as a collective. Um, and yeah, decided to come along. Uh, was luckily invited. And from the first few sessions, I found that it was very informative, really. Um, having all of the experts come in and discuss, um, well, more or less teach us about air pollution, the different types, um, everything from wood burning to um, tire dust, um, many different types of pollutants that I didn't really know were a thing. Um, and then from there, we were able to come up with recommendations, which I thought was a really good way of um, almost uh, allowing us to inform ourselves before making those recommendations. Um, so I thought that was really, really useful. And then plus having everyone, I believe it was 50, 50 of us all together. Um, so yeah, having 50 people from all over the borough, um, all from very diverse backgrounds, like um, Ellis was saying. Um, yeah, it was just really interesting to see everyone come together. And I'm sure by the end of it, um, we couldn't really shut ourselves up, really. <laughs> we're, all, um, we're all just trying to get our um, recommendations across, trying to find things which um, are feasible. So, um, but one of the tasks that I really did enjoy was when we had to work in pairs to come up with a recommendation and then within the larger group, having to come up with a positive about that recommendation as well as a negative. So it just really allowed us to think a bit more, um, what's the word for it? A bit more, um, a bit more critical about the recommendations we're coming up with. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, well, I'm sure everyone here is really excited to see where we go from here, as in um, how they are implemented in the future. And yeah, that's me really. Um, but I'm just going to pass on to Ananya. Um, if you're there, yeah. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> this, I'm Ananya. Um, well, when I received the invitation to participate, I was um, intrigued and very interested for three simple reasons. I've always wanted to know more about the air quality in Wandsworth, especially since the closure of Hammersmith Bridge, uh, which I'm, all, I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, which has caused a lot more traffic to come through our borough. And um, from my work career point of view, I was also interested to understand the process and how Wandsworth is going about their recommendations to improve air quality. I work for a big metals trader, so I have some knowledge about sustainability and climate change and the energy transition. Um, so it was um, interesting to me. Um, as a resident, I'm interested to know what we should be doing as a borough to improve the air quality around us. For example, I, I was impressed to learn on the first day um, how the council has had previously improved the air quality significantly around Putney High Street uh, with electric buses. But there's always more to do, and I'm very pleased that I took the time to be involved. I think it's important. I personally found the first session to be very interesting. I We heard from various experts and uh, confirmed a lot, um, uh, confirmed much of what I, I thought. For example, it's the proximity and the direct exposure that's most harmful and that there are proven links to diseases like dementia, cardiovascular diseases and so on. 
and that we're also exposed to harmful levels of poor air quality in the underground as well as overground. I think the group was uh, very well representative, um, as you've heard from everyone else. I think uh, we all benefited from learning so much about air quality, and it was very clear that everyone wants to improve their health and live longer. But the process of change takes time. I believe that one's work bridge is also going to close for nine weeks soon. So I think like this, there will always be more challenges. Um, I think it's very important to educate people um, for the for us to look for the low hanging fruit, for residents to feel incentivized and look for solutions that work for us all, as well as working with other boroughs and the government uh, alongside the residents. Um, for example, I feel it's not just the pedestrians, but the drivers as well who are exposed to poor air quality. Um, at the same time, you know, there are so many more commercial vehicles and what have you, and motorbikes and delivery drivers on, on the road now, adding to pollutions at peak time. So I think we have to uh, be cognizant of the effect on our children, who are going to school at those hours and so on, and what can we do about this? So I look forward to the follow through. I believe if we can all work together, we can achieve a lot more and um, even more so if we're united by a common objective. Thank you. Um, who am I passing on to now? It's um, Nina's next. Nina, sorry. Thanks, yeah, Ananya. Thank no, you. that's fine. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, so I'm Nina. I actually live a couple of minutes walk from Battersea Art Centre. So when I got the letter, I thought, oh, this is perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, it's especially when I heard about the venue, because I thought, OK, I can just walk over and it works really well for me. Um, I was really thrilled to hear that this was happening because I was actually quite concerned about air quality. And it is something quite random to be concerned about because, you know, from the long list of things that one can be concerned about, why air quality? And uh, I think it actually began with when I moved here because I do live on Lavender Hill, so it is quite a busy road. And I just sort of noticed that it was just coughing more. I was not necessarily ill, but it was just, I think, irritating me. And I have a two-year-old son, um, and it was irritating him. And I, I do walk a lot in the in the borough. I, I actually, I active travel, so that's probably also another reason that I'm constantly on the road. Um, I, I, I didn't know before I went to the assembly the gravity of how bad it is. I just I, I always assumed it was more, yeah, you know, it's not good for your lungs. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't really understand how bad it can be when you have constant exposure to um, air, like bad air. And we did learn a lot, as uh, the other assembly members have have told us, um, have 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 told you here on this on this webinar. Um, but uh, you know the fact that. It can actually affect mental health, like dementia, was something that I didn't even fathom that that was possible, and um, it was quite shocking because at the when I learned that because at the time my um, my grandma had actually just passed from dementia. She she was quite old, but she had been suffering it suffering from it for a while, and now I always wondered because I know that she was exposed to a lot of bad air kind of made me wonder whether um, it had anything to do with it. And um, it also coincided that uh, my family who is back in Sri Lanka, they were complaining about the smog coming in from India. And it also got me thinking about how air, even though it's local, it moves and, you know, producing bad air in one borough. It, you know, we are also sort of, it's national, it's on a regional scale. Um, and helping and sorry improving air quality here uh, can be really good for you know our neighboring boroughs as well um, I was really happy with the citizens assembly something that always stood out to me was um, for every session we said you know take space make space so it was always about active listening listening to what other people were saying 
considering their point of view and also being able to voice your own opinion, which was really nice. It was a really great atmosphere. Um, and, you know, even though we were um, informed, we did get an opportunity to actually choose who we could hear from after the first session. So we did have a little autonomy on um, who to hear from. We made requests specifically about what we wanted to hear more on, which I thought was really good because it gave it allowed us to sort of direct on what we, you know, what we thought was important as um, citizens of the borough, rather than sort of saying, okay, well, now you're just going to be lectured by this next person. So we had the choice of um, what information we wanted to make our decisions to make our recommendations. So that was great. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just hoping that the recommendations now sort of start taking form. And um, I think I'll pass over to Emma now. Or Ellis again, I don't know if Emma's on the call. It's me. Um, thanks, Nina. Um, so yeah, just just like following on from that, um, and as mentioned, um, over the days we've shared a lot of thoughts, loads of emotions, and even more ideas on how we can make that change. And to help us condense the how, and maybe more importantly, the why, um, in the last session, we all added post-it notes uh, to a board, um, which a smaller group of the team, some of which are on the call just now, took away to create a bit of a story map. Um, it's easy to get bogged down in the detail of specific recommendations, the logistics, the challenges, and everything associated with implementing change. Um, but instead, this statement offers a broader view, a view that represents the whole assembly, the whole borough, and affirming why positive change is so much needed. Um, I'm going to read it out for you just now, but you can see it on the screen um, in front of you as well. We are all residents of Wandsworth. We love living here and we're proud to live here. We're your neighbours, we're you, making difficult decisions every day. As people that have come together through the Citizens' Assembly, many of us have had our eyes opened. We've learned from fellow residents, businesses and others, and we now know how vulnerable many of us are, including, as Nina said, our children, and how frustrated by past actions. However, we also believe that the changes needed are both necessary and will actually make our Wandsworth an even better place to live. Air pollution is all around us and our choices are killing us. Air pollution is a fact um, and it contributes to poorer health outcomes and we're frightened. We recognise that climate, uh, that acting on air pollution will help address climate change. We recognise that a lot needs to be done. We need change and we need action. Our decision makers need educating and what much of our behaviours must be changed. But all of us have a role to play and we can show and we have shown that by coming together we can identify the things we have in common and that must be acted upon. We are encouraged as we can see what can be done um, and we believe that this change in the borough will change it for the better. We do recognise that councils have limits to its powers but it must be encouraged to do what it can and push on what it cannot. We have a sense of hard work and tough choices ahead but are hopeful as we know the solutions exist. And now I think um, that's obviously that's our statement and I'm going to pass back to you, Nina, to carry on. Hi again, everyone. I'm actually um, I'm not going to talk about me. <laughs> I'm actually here to um, make a statement on behalf of uh, a citizen assembly member who couldn't be here for this webinar. Um, he made a really great point when he said when we improve our air, the benefit is almost immediate. It's local, um, as I think I think it was Ananya who's, who said, um, air quality, you're most affected by the proximity, right, of, of bad air. So when we improve air locally, we are actually the ones who get the most direct benefit. Um, and whereas, for example, if we were looking just in general to reduce emissions for climate change, it would take a long time for us to see positive impacts of that. Whereas, as we all saw with COVID lockdowns, the air does not take long to clean up. It's pretty much instant. So the, the benefit cost ratio is really good. Um, 
and it's you know what AI is a common good. It's so it's not even something that someone has to buy. Everyone will benefit from it. Um, whoever is walking on the road will be breathing in cleaner air, and I think that that's really amazing. And um, yeah, I think Alex would have wanted to share that point if he was here. Thanks. And I think I have to pass over to. Do I have to pass over to again? Um, Ananya. Ananya. Oh, yes, Ananya. Yeah. No, I think um, that was really well said, Nina. Um, I think all I want to say really is that um, you've heard so much about air quality and um, how it's so important that we change it. Um, but I think it's really important, and we all discussed this over the four days, that it's so important to be positive uh, about it and not to be punitive. Um, it involves changing. If we want to, uh, you know, improve the air quality, it involves education and so on. So I think with all the discussions we had, we came up with many good um, recommendations. And um, I think uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a fair amount of work to do, but um, it can be done. Um, it's an ongoing process. Um, uh, and everything is interrelated, how we live in our homes, um, from the vehicles on the road, um, from the restaurants, um, everything is interrelated uh, to, to climate change and the energy transition. So uh, air quality is just part of it, but it affects us directly and it's close to home. So I think if we want to make our, you know, I'm very proud to live in Wandsworth and uh, I'd like to make our bar borough even better. Uh, so thank you. Thanks, Ananya. And I think we're going to pass on to Andrew Hager now from yeah, Wales Council. Yeah, sorry, to, I took no, that's to right. that. Don't worry at all. <laughs> yeah, who's going to talk too. talk about the um, how the council is taking forward the recommendations? Hi, everyone. So um, I'm Andrew Hager, and I'm head of climate change and sustainability at Wandsworth Council. And I just want to say thank you to all the members of this assembly for coming along, giving up their time, and sharing their insight and perspectives, uh, as well as all the hard work they put into sort of like taking part in the assembly and developing the recommendations. So I'm just going to talk a bit about the recommendations and uh, what we're going to be doing with them. Um, so first of all, I'll talk about sort of what we've done so far. So um, as Jay mentioned. Uh, the council has formally received recommendations. We did that at the Environment Committee on the 27th of June, and members of the Citizens Assembly came along to speak to the Environment Committee about the Assembly, uh, its work, its recommendations. Uh, lots of the sort of same Assembly members who are speaking here spoke then as well, uh, and it was really well received by the committee. Um, uh, sort of Councillor Gasser and Councillor Cockley were there, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was really good to hear that sort of directly from the assembly members to present their reports and it very much is their report um, to us as the council. Um, since then we've also held um, an internal workshop with key officers so we can develop our response to each recommendation. Um, we've also started to reach out to key partners about the recommendations so we can start talking to them about how we work together to take these recommendations forward. So that's what we've done so far. Um, so I want to talk a bit about what the recommendations cover. Um, so the, there's uh, 50 odd recommendations um, that have been put forward by the Assembly um, and these are grouped under these sorts of headings. So there's business and workplaces, green spaces, public transport policy and access, active travel, so that's walking and cycling, uh, car related transport including parking, awareness raising and use of data, children's schools and homes. So you can see there's a really broad range of recommendations um, that have been coming out uh, that have come out from the, the citizen assembly and so we're going to be looking at all of these recommendations and looking at what we as the council can do um so the recommendations are not solely for the council to implement so um therefore um lots of other sort of people in the borough so it, it's for us as the council um, and primarily we're going to be the ones responding to this um, but also uh, it's for our public sector partners as well um, it's also for businesses in the borough it's also for um, communities and residents as well uh, and the action that they can take themselves to um, improve air quality in the borough either through individual actions or community actions that can be taken also by um, putting pressure frankly on us as council and other public sector partners to take action as well and that is a part of it um, and so the recommendations are for the borough as a whole to act upon 
Um, so it's not just for the council, it's for everybody in the borough to, to take part in, in what we're going to be doing around um, trying to improve air quality across the whole of the borough. So I'm just going to go through sort of the top 10 recommendations from the assembly. So there's 50 recommendations. It covers that really broad range, but I just want to delve into the, the top 10. So there was a prioritization process that took part that took place um, after the, the sessions uh, had finished, just to kind of make sure that we knew which are the most important ones that we need to look at first. And um, so I'll just kind of like go through these quite quickly. So um, First one was around uh, public transport buses should be fully electric by 2025. There's also the second one was around incentivizing behavior change. So trying to get people on board, showing the benefits of tackling air pollution. I think that's come out from what the assembly members have been saying uh, this evening around trying to show the benefits and the positives that come from taking action on climate change. Um, best integration of transport services, so making those less polluting travel options the best uh, and increasing sort of safety speed and con connectivity. So it's kind of like those less polluting options are then the default that people turn to because it is easy, it is safe uh, and it's it's a simple way of getting around. And then um, increasing awareness and education. So not enough people are aware of the scale of the problem. Again, I think that's come out really clearly from the assembly members um, that Lots of people didn't necessarily know about the impact of air quality and air pollution on people's health um, and, and what it can do across the borough. So it's about increasing that awareness and telling people about it so that they then want to make the changes and are supportive of changes that are taking place. Um, a public transport system that is attractive for people to use um, by increasing services, improving access. So this is about increasing that um, the services so people can get on them and also increasing the access so people can actually get on there, especially if people maybe have disabilities, a difficulty in getting around. So it's making sure that people can access that public transport. Uh, improving the quality and quantity of air quality monitoring data. So it's, we need to be able to measure. Um, it's about measuring the, the um, air quality better and then sharing that information and letting people know about it. Um, improved cycling infrastructure, including cycle lanes and bike storage, um, improving safety for cyclists and pedestrians uh, through training and enforcement of regulations. So again, that's about um, getting that infrastructure in place and making cycling um, a, a safe thing, an attractive thing for people to do. Uh, increasing secure bike storage for employees so they can commute to work by bike and then improving accessibility and usability of uh, air quality data so people can see it and understand it and also understand its relevance to health and to climate change as well. So the very quick run through of the top 10 recommendations from the assembly. Uh, the full report has got all of the recommendations in detail. I've had to pre-see a little bit of the recommendations because um, to fit it on this slide basically. Um, but th there's a lot more on the, the council website. Um, I think my colleague Megan's already put uh, a link into the chat about that. Um, so that's the recommendations. And I'll talk a bit about what we as the council are doing. Um, so we're going to be producing a detailed response to every recommendation by the Citizens Assembly, and that's going to be developed over the summer. So we've already started on that. I mentioned about the workshop that we've had internally to bring together key officers from across the organisation. So we've already started on this. We're thinking about what can we do to address each of the recommendations. There's some really good ideas that came out of that, and we're following that up now with um, with different teams to see sort of like you know what are the details about what we can do to do it. And then over the summer, we're going to be developing also a new air quality action plan um, by the air quality team, uh, and that's going to be developed, and that's going to have the recommendations from the Citizens Assembly as its focus. Um, so uh, air quality colleagues are going to be doing that. The air quality action plan is something that we need to produce. Um, it, it's something that we're required to do, um, and it's a really good opportunity to make sure that it's really robust and that there's um, that. Yeah, like I said, that the recommendations are really at the heart of it. So we're taking that forward and both this detailed response and the new air quality action plan are going to go to the environment committee meeting on the 14th of September. So we're going to be taking this forward and setting out what we're going to be doing in quite a lot of detail um, and setting out sort of when we're going to be delivering on it. And then we're going to work to implement as many of the recommendations as um, as we're able to. Um, so we're going to be taking this seriously as Councillor Gass and Councillor Clarkley have said, this is a, a big priority for us as an organisation and we're going to be taking forward as many of the recommendations as we can. And then just wanted to let you know about sort of reporting on what we're doing as well. So reporting on progress. So some of the recommendations uh, can be tackled quickly, some of the stuff 
is are things that we're kind of already doing and we can then augment it and and do a bit more and try to go a bit quicker on it and that stuff we might be able to do quite quickly some of them are going to take a bit of time to implement because it's going to take a bit of time to plan it out properly to make sure we've got the funding in place and then to develop the projects to be able to, to deliver it so we want to make sure that we're keeping everybody updated as we progress in delivering these recommendations so we're going to be updating regularly on progress so we do a regular um, annual uh, once with climate action plan update which tends to go in february um, to the environment committee uh, and that's an opportunity for us to report on that first stage of delivering against the recommendations so um, that report is an overall report on everything we're doing around climate change it's a really sort of like broad sort of approach around sort of transport around air quality around waste around sort of um, energy efficiency and decarbonizing our buildings as well as the progress we're making as an organization around reducing our carbon emissions and so that's going to be the first opportunity where we can report on progress publicly so go to the committee so they can scrutinize us as officers and ask us questions about it um, and also um, so it's publicly available so that everybody can see that uh, and then there's also an annual air quality progress report which traditionally comes in july and that's another opportunity for us to report on progress and as we step through sort of the next couple of years we'll be reporting at those points regularly um, we'll also be sharing progress as part of our air quality and climate change communications and engagement as well um, and as we complete projects and actions so we'll be letting people know about when we've done things and we'll be engaging with people about what we're doing as well as we go along so we're hoping that that will make sure that everybody on this webinar uh, everybody across the borough is going to be um, up to speed on what we're doing and knows that we're taking this seriously and that we are um, working hard to deliver on the recommendations um, and that's it from me so um, I think um, thank you for coming um, it's been really, really good to have so many people here uh, listening and um, thank you to the Citizen Assembly members who've come along and, and given up their time. Um, just a little plug, we've got a climate newsletter and um, so you can hear about events like this, workshops, other things, just generally be kept in the loop around um, what ones with council is doing around climate change and air quality. Um, so you can sign up to that link there. I think Megan's probably put a link in the chat as well. Um, so thank you.